Hello and welcome to Flash Forward with ACE. I am Dr. Jackie Crockford, ACE Senior Product Manager, and this is episode number three of our six episode series where we will be revisiting some very early pandemic conversations with our favorite subject matter experts. And today I'm very excited to be chatting with two business savvy pros, Dan Kleckner and John Lindela. Hi guys. And I'm going to start with you. Uh, Dan and I go a little bit of a ways back. We work together uh, up in the Pacific Northwest. And Dan uh, is now the owner of Cutting Edge Fitness in Kirkland, Washington and Issaquah, Washington, as well as Kinetic Fitness in Butte, Montana, which are three startup training gyms. He's also a mentor to several startup gym owners himself now. So Dan, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Jackie. I appreciate you guys having me and I'm um, looking forward to sharing some business insights with everyone today. So thanks for having me. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome back. Uh, and John Lindela, also welcome back to you. Uh, John is joining us from Oregon and he is the director of fitness at Flight Live Pro, which is an online virtual fitness platform for coaches. And he's also a biomechanic specialist who just recently did a great live webinar with us titled Hip Spe Specialization for Pain-Free Movement. So welcome back, John. Dan and I go way back, uh, not too far, but you know, a little bit. And um, he has uh, had a great journey up into where he is now. So Dan, share with us just a little bit about sort of how you got to where you are in the business aspect of the fitness industry and having uh, these three different ownerships uh, across the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, um, I've been pretty fortunate uh, in my fitness career journey that it's kind of just been a natural evolution. Um, you know, I was like most people started off as a personal trainer um, with you, Jackie, at a lovely place here in the Northwest. I was there for about five or six years. Um, it was a great place to be, learned a lot, a lot of good um, colleagues and relationships and stuff like that. Um, but I ultimately knew uh, there wasn't a ton of growth potential there and it, you know eventually i wanted to make the move and be able to, to grow in my career a little more and um, i was fortunate from there to go to a startup training gym um, not as the owner but just as a manager and being able to kind of see how things work there and learn the um, small group training model which is what we currently use now and then from there be able to um, open up our first location here and then uh, partner with a business partner to open up a second gym in montana and then also um, from there, open up a second location here. And I think the biggest thing for me is I've just been very fortunate with um, having a lot of good mentors in my corner, um, guys that just helped me kind of expedite the process and be able to grow and, and learn from some of the best minds in the business. Um, and then now I'm able to share a lot of that with some guys and gals that I am currently mentoring and trying to help with the, the gym ownership process. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. So John, I know you have a great story as well, sort of how you got to where you are in the industry now. What is, what is your uh, short version of that? <laughs> uh, long story short, I actually started in aerospace engineering way back in undergrad, got extremely strong in math and physics, decided it wasn't for me, switched to sports medicine instead and went from like the BC student to the 4.0 GPA. And then early on in my career, I sought out every certification I could under the sun to where there are more letters behind my name eventually than in my name. And eventually I boiled that away that's into what I do now. It's enabled me to consult for Nautilus, a worldwide brand on exercise design, publish my own book, and really work with all walks of life to where at this point I say there's not a body on the planet I can't affect positively. Wonderful. It's a great way to look at it. All right, so we have a lot of people hopefully listening and watching here today. Uh, maybe you're new in the industry, maybe you've been in it for a while. Uh, maybe you've gone through the past couple of years here, which has been a very interesting and challenging time for all of us in the fitness industry and in any industry really. Um, but let's first start out with a, our first question and this is kind of a doozy. So uh, Dan, I'll come back to you here first on this one. Uh, if you were starting out now in the fitness industry, or maybe starting over now in the fitness industry, what might you do the same and what might you do differently given all that, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's such a good question. And there is so many changes that have happened in the fitness industry the last couple of years. Um, you know, and I've, I've made my fair share of mistakes and learned stuff the hard way and all that. But I think the biggest thing for me that I probably would change is 
Um, earlier in my career, I would have put more value and more time into going to different seminars and continuing education and stuff like that. Um, there was definitely a emphasis on continuing education at the gym I started off at, but it was more in-house stuff, not a whole lot of traveling to different seminars and stuff like that. And um, you learn a lot of those seminars, but for me, what I really got out of it was being able to meet other like-minded professionals, meet a lot of mentors there, meet a lot of people that I could connect and um, build relationships with who have helped me a ton in my career and being able to get to where I am today. So I, I would have started that earlier in my career. I didn't start it probably until I was, you know, five or six years into the industry. Um, and then I think that would have accelerated me uh, opening up my gyms a little bit quicker as well. I think I would have jumped into that path of, you know, kind of entrepreneur gym owner earlier in my career as well, which I think would have got kickstarted if I started the kind of networking and, and going to the seminars. And as far as stuff I do the same, uh, I would, like I said, I would just started stuff earlier and now continue to build on what we've been doing here and have the right systems and staff and nice um and just a follow-up quick question for you before we go over to john with this one dan did you always know that you wanted to be sort of an entrepreneur was that something from the jump that you realized was a path for you uh, no not at all um i started training and that i really liked that and knew that i liked it but i knew that i kind of wanted to get out of there eventually but I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do and I actually did a couple different mentorships and worked with a couple different um, business coaches and stuff like that that then instilled kind of the confidence in me to be like you should absolutely be doing this on your own and you have the ability to go open up your own thing and I, I didn't really realize that until maybe I kind of knew it a little bit but I don't think I had the confidence and realized it until um, those mentors and, and different guys kind of instilled that in me. And then once that light bulb kind of came on, then I was like, oh, yeah, this is absolutely what I'm meant to do and, and what mm -hmm. I want to do. But I didn't know that early on at all. Mm -hmm. Interesting. OK. Um, all right. So now, John, over to you. If you were going to be starting out or starting over in the fitness industry, what would you be doing the same or might what might you be doing differently? I mean, if, if we go back to when I started, I would definitely heavily invest in Bitcoin while it was cheap. But <laughs> right. <laughs> if, if we're just talking about fitness, uh, it's something Dan's already doing. I would have seeked out mentors. Um, I, I very much so thought early on I need to blaze my own trail and do everything on myself, carry that burden, where when, when every notable achievement really happens standing on someone else's shoulders. And so instead of having to, to bushwhack your way to where you want to be, you can seek people out that are willing to share their knowledge base with you so that you can cultivate it into your own and then try to improve upon it. And part awesome. of Part of the mindset is just, you know, the benefit of aging through, I would have uh, tried to be more self-aware and realize I don't have to be good at absolutely everything and not be competitive with everyone else mm -hmm. in the gym to where if someone else got a kettlebell client, no, that should have been my client. It's realizing your own strengths and weaknesses and taking that broad picture and step back of what am I good at? What am I passionate about? And then how do I get to be the coach that I would currently hire? And then start working backwards, finding that path through mentorships, through internships, through whatever it takes to get to where you want to be long term without having to just really headbutt a stone, I guess, to try to get there. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm hearing two things, right? We're, we're saying networking, definitely good idea to be doing from the beginning, regardless sort of, of, of your path. Maybe if you want to go the entrepreneur route or if you're kind of looking to be a, an employee or independent contractor of sorts. Uh, and then also, John, what you were just saying about realizing that that you don't have to do all of the things and and be all of the all of the expert all of the time, and and really having those mentors help you out. Awesome. So uh, let's continue down this path here. Um, and remember, we're sort of revisiting some conversations. So early on in the pandemic, and and Dan, you are part of this conversation. We talked about you know what people are doing currently. Uh, at the beginning of the pandemic to sort of address what was going on um, with keeping people safe in their facilities and safe in their in their training environment. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, and Dan, since you have three uh, brick and mortar locations, I'll start with you about what you and your staff are currently doing to address the pandemic and sort of COVID as it has been moving and morphing along over these past couple of years. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've learned a ton in the last couple of years. Um, luckily, our model was already 
set up pretty well um, as far as doing all small group personal training. So as far as like spacing and how we had to physically have stuff set up and just the model and stuff, we were pretty lucky because a lot of that was already in place, um, just coincidentally. Uh, but stuff that we've had to change and kind of add is, I, you know, definitely, I think all the clients now are the biggest thing for them. Obviously, they have their goals, and stuff, but they want to feel safe. I think that's a huge thing for them. They want to feel safe in the atmosphere that they're in. So um, we do have people more in like a pod set up now. So we have four people in at a time for small group training, um, but they all have their own space now. People aren't kind of neandering around the gym as much sharing equipment and stuff like that. So we have kind of redundant equipment in each, each spot, uh, spot of the gym so that all four people can have their own stuff, stay in their own space. Um, we had already kind of cut out a lot of our group classes and kind of went all in on the small group training side of things. So we continue to do that. We still have a couple of group classes we offer throughout the week with a little bit lower, um, uh, you know, cap numbers. But for the most part for us, we've just stuck to the small group, make sure that everybody can stay in their own space. Obviously put a bigger emphasis on uh, cleaning. I think the gym is the cleanest it's ever been in the last couple of years and just making sure that everything is constantly being cleaned and people are feeling safe. And that's the biggest thing for us is just having a place that people come and um, can get a workout in and, and push themselves, but also feel like they're in a safe place and, and they don't have to worry about anything and can enjoy, you know, being with our staff and, and having fun and, and working out. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, John, over to you because you have a, a brick and mortar space, but you are with Flight Live Pro, which is an online coaching platform. So, so talk to us a little bit about how that has sort of morphed through the pandemic. Yeah. So we, we were very fortunate with launching flight because we did it January right before, you know, everything changed. And since then I've been hundred percent virtual actually. Good. And it's made me a better teacher and evaluator as an instructor, because now there's no, there's no sense of being in, in the same space for me and my clients. We are, where it's just on camera. So all the little cues that involve touching or being close or directly manipulating the situation. Now I have to think out beforehand of how can I express this over camera and never being in the same room. And it's maybe better to the extent of having everything planned out and having options and being able to think on your feet for, you know, in a virtual environment, state of fact, like pets happen, fire drones happen, and being able to, you know, headphones don't work immediately when you start onto a session. So being able to think quickly and have a really concise, solid plan, uh, especially on the flight platform, we have 30 minute hour sessions. They start on the hour and they end at an exact timing. So there's no concept of answering a few questions after the time rolls over. You have to have everything ready to go. And it really brings your game up in terms of being exact and specific and working with purpose. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And so um, actually both of you, I'll, I'll back up just a little bit. Um, Dan, prior to the pandemic, what would you say your model was as far as percentage wise from live training and online training and how has that percentage or hybrid model shifted percentage wise, I guess? As far as the hybrid model, yeah, we still have little bits and pieces of the online training. We obviously went all online for a couple months um, when everything was shut down, which was nice. We kind of got to feel our way through that and, and learn a lot with that. Um, we did have kind of an overwhelming amount of people want to come back to in-person as stuff started to, to feel safer and stuff like that. So we have gone, you know, 95% back to in-person. And um, I think our clients enjoy that and like coming to the gym and being able to interact with us. But there's also a lot of value you know, in what John is doing in the online thing. So I think it's good, obviously, that we're both on here and can kind of share both sides of things and how you can be successful with either one. Um, but we have definitely gone, you know, back to pretty heavy in person. And uh, just to, we mostly just do our online stuff now for like nutrition meetings or maybe some one off like mobility sessions, stuff like that. But our, as far as our training and brick and mortar membership stuff, it's, it's uh, all back to in person. Mm -hmm. And John, for you, uh, with Flight Live, I mean, that is an online platform. Do you see any part of that uh, for you moving to in-person training or going back to in-person training for you? At the, at the start of the pandemic, I was probably 90-10 in terms of in-person for the 90, virtual for the 10. And mm -hmm. until recently, is 100% virtual. And the benefit is this year, I'm trying to train one person on all seven continents within the calendar year. And I'm down to Australia and Asia, but I've got the rest lined out already. And so in terms of like a client pool and a reach, it's, it's literally worldwide. Everything, 
you know, I'm, I, there's, there's no one I can't touch on the planet as long as they have a good data connection, at least. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And so that is, that is very unique because prior to the brick and mortar, it's geographically limited and people, if it's a certain level of commute, just don't want to have to make it during a certain time. Mm-hmm. And so I won't, I don't see a world where I'll be back to brick and mortar as a majority because a lot of those clients have said, we'll never be in the same room, but I still want to be able to have access and train with you wherever you're at. Mm-hmm. Got it. Um, yeah. So this is really interesting because both of you have these business models that are working very well. And, you know, we just have to, to meet our clients, those clients that we want to serve where they're at. So I love that this is working for both of you. Um, let's move on to our next question here. And it, it goes down to, um, you know, we mentioned a little bit earlier, Dan, you were talking about continuing education as being important at the, in, in our industry, but sort of at the beginning of your of your career. Um, let's talk about recertification and continuing education and how important that is right now as we're sort of shifting and, and moving with, you know, how the industry has changed over time. Um, John, I'll, I'll come back to you because I know that Flight Live does a lot with different, you know, people around the globe, as you were mentioning, different trainers and fitness professionals. Um, let's hear from you about recertification or impact and, and the meaning of that for you all. Yeah, it, like recertification and continuing education are really how you stand out in the world now. And for me, like I said, it's instead of working in a small geographic location, now it's this huge ocean that I'm trying to make a dent in. And if it's just commonplace training and I let things lapse and I don't try to improve as a professional, it's going to show to people I'm trying to target and advertise to. And so it's, it's the most important thing you can continue to do to make yourself stand out. And working with trainers and clients all over the world, you do get to see some different things, different standards of how different countries do their continuing education. But it's, it's easy to see that the more effort you put in, the more you continue to push yourself to achieve higher levels, better certifications, the more you'll stand out when you do post things out. Because often it's the best thing still is word of mouth. And so if you can get a client who tells other clients, they'll jump on board with you for pretty much any price. But without that, people will do the research and they'll look at your LinkedIn, they'll look at your Instagram and see, okay, what kind of background does this guy say, the guy or girl, say the message that I'm trying to hear? And is it something I would actually invest money in to contact them? Just like most trainers, I'm sure you've been bombarded with things since the start of the pandemic. And daily, I get offers on LinkedIn to help me find clients. Um, And so there's this there's this big pool of just noise and you have to find your way to make yourself differentiate and really stand out in that pool. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, Dan, what are your thoughts? I know you've in your three different locations, you've got staff, right. That that is working there. So talk to us a little bit about recertification and continuing education for those folks. Yeah, I think it's uh, two things for me as a business owner. One, um, as we're hiring staff, that's the first thing we look at is what certifications they have and making sure that they have, um, you know, a certification from the appropriate board like ACE. Um, so I've, and then obviously that they keep that current and recertify as well. So that's the, the very baseline for us is making sure that they have that certification it shows that they have the knowledge base we need them to have to be able to fit into our systems and stuff. And then I think the second thing is, is just being able to evolve and, and stay up with the times. I think a lot of like business owners that I've talked to over the last few years that are struggling um, are typically kind of still, you know, stuck back in 2020 and still trying to do all the same things they did two years ago and not realizing that a lot has changed. And if you're not changing and evolving and growing, um, you're going to get kind of get, uh, you know, left behind. And so I think for us, the recertification part with, with governing boards like ACE and stuff, they do an awesome job of staying up to date with what's going on and current trends and how you can change and evolve and stuff like that. So me as a business owner, it's important to stay on top of those trends, but it's also important for me to keep my staff aware of that stuff. So they understand if we are making changes, why we're making those changes. Um, And I think all that comes along with the recertification process and um, the learning from ACE and and other companies, as far as what uh, is out there and what's evolving and what's changing and, um, you know, if you're not staying up and changing and doing that kind of stuff right now, I think you're, you're going to struggle for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we definitely want to be sure that everybody uh, watching and listening is aware, obviously, that ACE has a lot of continuing education to offer. Um, and we have uh, a whole bunch of different platforms and a lot of content available to you that will hopefully help you in your career. That's our goal here at ACE, to get people moving. And that doesn't mean just moving our bodies, but moving forward in our careers as well as in the health and uh, fitness industry. So um, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We're coming to the last couple minutes here, but I wanted to ask um, any final words of wisdom or any final thoughts if you were talking to someone that's you know trying to change or grow, or as, as you were just talking about, Dan, adapt to what's been happening over the past couple of years, uh, any final words of wisdom for those people? Dan? Um, yeah, I think just don't be, like John mentioned as well, don't be afraid to reach out to mentors and seek out advice from people that have been there and done that. Um, you know, the fitness industry can be challenging. A lot of times you can feel like you're kind of stuck in, in certain places and not growing and, and evolving. So um, I would highly encourage everyone to, to reach out to someone um, that can help you mentor and guide you through that process. And that's been the main thing that's been able for me to be able to grow in my career is, is having help from you know, mentors that have been there and done that. So know that there is help out there. Other people are, have gone through the same struggles you've gone through. So, um, you know, don't feel bad reaching out to those people. They, they're more than happy to help out and share their time and, mm -hmm. and kind of help guide you through the process. Awesome. John, what do you think? Words of, words of wisdom, final thoughts. Uh, the only, Dan said a, said a great remark there. The only thing I'd add is find your passion. Find the thing that makes the getting up at 4.30 a.m. to train clients worth it. And you spend so much time in this occupation serving the needs of others that if you dread your clients coming up or dread the hole you found yourself in, you're going to waste away and burn yourself out. So find those things that actually get you excited to get up and go do, even if it's a 5 a.m. client or whatever time it may be, because that energy will carry through and that will help you become a better professional. Mm -hmm. Love it. Great words of wisdom from our wonderful uh, pros and subject matter experts. Again, joining us today is Dan Kleckner and John Lindela. Guys, thanks again for joining us. Um, if they want to connect with you, if you're watching live and want to connect with our uh, panelists here today, John, how should they get a hold of you? Flightlivepro.com, LinkedIn. I'm the one John Lindela you're going to find on there. So it's very easy. Instagram, same thing. If you spell the last name right, you'll find me for sure. Awesome. Thanks, John. And Dan, how should we get in touch with you? Uh, yeah, there's several different ways people can do it, but uh, Instagram's probably the easiest. Uh, my Instagram's just the click one, two. I'm on there all the time. Uh, people can email me, dan at cuttingatfitness.com. Find me on Facebook anywhere. Um, yeah, however, whatever's easiest. Awesome. Thanks again for joining us today, guys. Uh, in our next episode, again, of the six part series, that will be on May 25th. And we're going to be talking with longtime ACE Pro and subject matter expert Shauna Verstegen about clients and communities. So until then, let's get people moving. <laughs>